This is Andy Gutierrez from StarWars.com, and you are listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. This is the podcast you're looking for. This is James Arnold Taylor, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Hmm, I have a good feeling about this. Let me try that again with the microphone. Wow, what an interesting way to start the show. The host not having his mic turned on. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to CWK Live. Every Monday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time, I'm your host, Dan Zare. Thrilled to be talking Star Wars with each and every one of you. Yes, thank you, Minta. I, I'm glad you said that because I didn't catch it, and then I realized, wait, something is off. Oh, wait, my microphone is not in front of me. So that I find when you're podcasting, it helps to have a microphone in front of you. Let me get this a little bit dark here, too. Let's brighten things up a bit. All right, good to see everybody. Yeah, it's time to do some Facebook Live. Let's talk some Star Wars uh, as you are trickling in and joining us tonight. Hello, Jason. He says, looking forward to another fun show. Thank you, Jason, so much. Minta, this is the way. It's CWK Day. Wonderful to see all of you as we explore the Star Wars universe together. Let me change this around a little bit, make my camera a little bit better for you. There we go. Let's zoom in. Let's zoom out. A little bit of production stuff here for you. Well, we've got a great show for you tonight. I think that looks pretty good. Happy Monday, Mary. Good to see you on the show. You missed it. I forgot to turn on my microphone at the beginning. That was exciting. So on today's show, we've got a couple of fun things for you. We're going to look at your top five most from Light and Magic on the Bucking Bronco. The second episode in Light and Magic, a really, really fascinating episode. And actually, it might be my favorite one of the six-part series, but we'll see. We'll see when I review revisit them. We'll see if that changes. Also, Star Wars merchandise updates, and then, of course, your comments and questions. So now, let's take a look at what is brewing in the world of Star Wars this week. So, what's brewing in the world of Star Wars this week, and what might be the most pressing for members of the of our Coffee with Kenobi family is late last week, I believe it was on Friday. It was announced on the Disney Parks blog that dates for 2023 for the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser are available. So sure enough, I looked on the website, talked to Becky Mankin of MEI and Mouse Fan Travel, and yes, dates are available. So uh, there's a lot of... Uh, plates kind of spinning right now a lot of balls in the air as it were but what i can tell you uh because i want to give you all the information that i have when i have it uh we are of course planning our trip on the halcyon many of you in the cwk alliance and members of the coffee with kenobi community have talked about wanting to go on this trip this ship this voyage with me and members of the Coffee with Kenobi family. I know Corey Club will be joining us. I know Tom Gross will be joining us. And the one and only Mason Z, Mason Zare, will be joining us too. So the way it works now is we're kind of, we're very much looking at what is available. I don't think you can actually book until September 1st. So we've got a very small window. Hopefully all of you are listening to this and you'll get an idea if you're considering going on the trip. But I will say we're thinking about going in early June. So sometime between... I would say the 8th of June and uh, the 14th of June, somewhere in that window. So the three cruises we're looking at, we're just going to pick one. Uh, we've got June 12th, 13th, and then you're done the 14th as the first option. We've got June 10th, 11th, and you're done the 12th. Or lastly, June 8th and 9th, and you're done the 10th. So those are the three options we are looking at. Um, as soon as we know for sure what is available and what options we have, I will let you know. I think what I'll do is I'll just post it in this CWK cafe. So if you're listening to this, you obviously follow coffee with Kenobi on Facebook and you see what's going on with us on Facebook. Uh, so please, uh, keep that in mind. I will try to blast that out as soon as I can. Ben, glad to have you, man. Uh, you're not late at all. You're right on time. We're just talking about looking at and finalizing some dates for the the how the halcyon the galactic star cruiser trip that we're going to take next summer on coffee with kenobi and with mei and mouse fan travel so again the top three dates we're looking at are june 12th to the 14th 
June 10th to the 12th or June 8th to the 10th in kind of the order of, of what we're looking for. So keep that in mind. Uh, I'll try to uh, have a member of MEI Miles Fan Travel on really, really soon so that we can uh, kind of walk you through the process of how that's going to look. Blake says, hey, I'm late, but what's up, CWK fam? Got dinner and watching baseball distracting me. Hey, that's good. That's good. I hope you are enjoying the game, bud. Uh, the Cubs, you know, are the Cubs, but, you know, still going to be a big fan no matter what, right? Be a big fan no matter what. So I want to show you something uh, that is really, uh, I think is really cool uh, that I got sent from DK, uh, not DK, DC Shoes, and I actually left it in the other room. So I'm going to try to play the What's Brewing intro again really, really fast and see if I can make it back in time and show you these shoes. So time me. Here we go. Aha! I did it. I was fast-ish. So so DC Shoes, uh, a few weeks ago, they announced a new line of things. They've worked with um, a lot of great um, IPs uh, before, but they've got a great Star Wars line of stuff coming up. And they were kind enough to send me. Thank you, Ben. He says, impressive, most impressive. Thank you, Ben. I use the force. So I, I love these shoes. Look at these shoes. First of all, this is the box. This is the shoe box that we're talking about here. It's it's the classic poster of The Empire Strikes Back. That alone is worth getting these shoes, I would say. But they're very, very nice. You've got some Orabesh all over the place. The inside, the tissue for the shoes has the Star Wars logo and some Mandalorian symbols on it. I did a reel. It's hard to see here, but I did a reel. It's on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. So you can check it out, but here is the shoe itself. Are you ready? You're just, you're going to want to buy it when you see them. I'm just telling you. So look at these babies. Now these are orange, rebel orange. So they just, they're really, really great looking shoes. But look at the, the tongue here. It's got the rebel symbol, the rebel alliance symbol on it, which is great. And then it comes with this really cool little... It's almost like a keychain, and then the bottom is an Orabesh. They're lightweight, they're really, really slick looking, and I feel like, and here's the back of it, I feel like it's subtle enough that if you didn't know, that's the stuff I seem to be drawn to the most, like it's got some strong, hardcore Star Wars vibes, but if you're not looking for it and you don't know, you just think, oh, those are some cool shoes, and they're my school colors, right, T-Chat? So I was psyched. I'm definitely going to be wearing those to school this week. Apparently, it's it's been brought to my attention that my shoes are drippy. And I was like, thanks so much. What does that mean? So I, my wife and I had to look it up. And it apparently means very cool. So this is going to add to my drippy shoe collection. How about that? Blake says, DC, DC shoes were all I'd wear as a kid. Those are slick. I love some Converse Star Wars shoes, too. Blake, you need to get these, man. You'd be styling. Ben says, I had a pair of DCs as a kid that I loved, and I might need to get another pair now. You should, Ben. They're really cool. And Minta says, I will sell you my Funko Pops for those shoes. Well, how about that? How about that? You know, I think you should keep your Funko Pops and, like, it just get the shoes. They're awesome. Minta, you will love them. So that that's the big one. Between that and the news that the dates for the House Hunter announced, that was a big deal to me. I was very excited about that. Ben says, Blake and I are on the same page. We would not have been the guys playing hacky. We would have been the guys playing hacky sack at lunchtime. Hey, that's cool. Those, some, those are some pretty fun people, I would say. All right, so let me think about this. Oh, I did say last week that I'm going to be at the D23 Expo uh, a week from this Friday in California at the Anaheim Convention Center where Star Wars Celebration was. Very much looking forward to that and bringing you a lot of coverage. I'll have much more to talk about next week on CWK Live, but you can definitely expect my coverage of D23. All right, now it's time. Well, that's the wrong logo. Top five moments from Light and Magic. It's actually episode two that we're looking at for tonight. Let me see if I took a picture of that. I did not. Well, trust me, that is the one that we were talking about. 
Let's see if I fixed it here. I did. All right. Good. Blake says, well, Dan, have a recording with Lou. Blake, uh, the, the odds are very, very high that Lou Mangello and I will be podcasting together, I, I would say. Nothing official, but I, I feel pretty strongly about it. He's a good friend of mine, so I'm, I'm sure that we're going to make that happen. All right, so tonight is Top 5 Moments from Light and Magic on the Bucking Bronco. A fabulous episode I said at the top of the show that honestly it might be my favorite of the of the the six part series for various reasons but we're going to go ahead and jump into uh number 5 right now. Number 5 for me is Phil's chest set. Of course I'm talking about Phil Tippett. I I I'd known, I think we all I shouldn't say we all know but it, it's it stands to reason that we all know that that was done in stop motion. Uh, very much inspired by Ray Harryhausen and all that great stuff. The, um, but seeing it like in a five to seven minute explanation by Phil Tippett, you know, currently going back and reviewing things and showing us a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. Light of Magic is great because of all the behind the scenes stuff and getting current modern takes on what they did, you know, as they were growing up very much coming into their craft and working on the original Star Wars together. I liked seeing him talk about what it was like and how much he enjoyed it. I thought it was really powerful, really interesting. And we're going to talk probably more about Phil in the next episode, I would think. Blake says, I would need some help with my top five. Like last week, my memory's foggy after watching a premiere. I understand. I had to refresh myself on it too. Mintas five. It was interesting to see George Lucas during his school years. He kept switching course until he fell into filming. Yes, I, I find George's story endlessly fascinating. Endlessly fascinating. Mary's number five, the movie's opening shot in the trench fun, trench fun, trench run filming process. It's amazing, right? And then one of the most iconic shots in all of cinema. Really great to see it break down. Jason's number five is this is a great quote. I'm glad you put it, Jason. He says, what is the secret to making movies? Persistence. I love this quote. Yeah, that's great. That is a great one, Jason. I'm glad that you got that one down. Number five for Ben is George's hiring process. Took him six months to hire the actors on American Graffiti, but it took him two questions to hire Rose. Showed how much he cared about the story, but also how he did things differently, like a startup. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's very um, very exact and precise. And there's like, um, I don't know, the way he works is fascinating to me. Really fascinating to me. Sorry, just checking out something. I know it's a really random light by the uh, Grand Inquisitor over here. Oh, the light is shining on his lightsaber. Well, that would do it. Blake's number five. I hope I remember this right. But the details of the trench run down to the size of the lights and the models. Never ever thought about that until that was mentioned. You are absolutely correct, Blake. That is exactly what is from the second episode for sure. Love it. Love it. All right, let's go to number two. Or sorry, number four. Number four for me, uh, Joe Johnson said to us, you know, it was just a job. And it wasn't a negative thing that he said that. He was just like, Hey, this is my profession. This is my job. This is what we do. We we're working on the original Star Wars. We had fun. It was memorable. But it, for us, it was just a job. And, you know, and when you hear that quote, it blows your mind because you think, just a job, you made one of the most iconic artistic creations in the history of history. But I think it's important to put it in perspective like that. One, If there's one thing I've learned through all the wonderful things I've gotten to experience hosting coffee with Kenobi and doing everything that I've been very blessed to do, thanks to a lot of you and your support, is that to us, it's like this larger in life thing, but to them, it's their job. Like it's, It is to them what is what teaching is to me or what your professions are to you or your careers or your vocations. And so I just like that perspective. It just made it more real worldly, but it also uh, conversely blows my mind that they had no idea what they were working on. How could they know? I mean, how could anyone know what it was going to do? And how it was going to impact people. Really special. Number four is uh, for Mary is Rose uh, Dungnan's. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Insights about the group and George. All the behind the scenes videos of the group. Are really marvelous. Really great stuff. Number four for me. To, it floored me to see how they got the opening shot for Star Wars. It was a simple technique. A bit. But it worked. It's really cool isn't it? I'm like showing these to Mason because we can really see the kind of the magic of how it all works and how it goes together. Ben's number four, the trenches on the Death Star being added to show the speed of the ships. I never thought of the trenches that way, but now I understand why I always love the trench run. Isn't it neat? It's just a 
just simple. I, what I'm noticing more and more about these special effects is it's all about physics and just basic things like that. It's really neat. Uh, let's see. Number four for Jason. I'm very thankful for the people who took all of the behind the scenes photos and video footage. It's really amazing to see how this movie was made. I am too. What Talk about treasures. Blake's four. I work off Dan here in the attitudes of these old school ILM guys. It's something we don't see much of anymore in Hollywood. These guys are my dad's age and the fact that his generation changed movies forever always hits me. It's, it's really marvelous, isn't it? It really is mind blowingly cool. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and jump into number three. Number three for me is Spielberg's Star Wars review. I mean, he was honest and candid, but also very gracious. And that, to me, I've never met Steven Spielberg, but that's just kind of how he strikes me, which is great. That's one of the reasons why he's so great. I mean, to be a good director, you have to be a good communicator, I think, first and foremost. And he obviously is one. He's one of the most famous uh, and most uh, respected of all time. But the fact that he loved the rough cut, even though a lot of it was just World War II footage, and there's only two special effects shots, I believe, at the time. But it was he and Alan Ladd Jr. were the only ones who really saw, thought it was going to be a great movie and thought it was a great movie. And I just like his review and hearing that was really fabulous, really great. Number three for Minta is Rose's perspective on the crew. She saw that they were like family through good and bad times. I like that too. I think that's really great. Jason's number three, the real life inspirations for so many of the shots in the movie, especially the Death Star Trench and how intricate the model was. I'm trying not to laugh that I started the show by not having my microphone on. I know I said that, but I just think it's funny. After over nine years, I still sometimes forget to turn on the mic. It's great. It's real world. <laughs> it's real world. Mary's number three, George's world creation and mythology concepts we knew were important to the creation of Star Wars, but this really cemented the fact. Yes. There's a mythology behind the mythology, which is something I tell my students. In fact, I told them today. It's just really neat. It's really cool how these stories, the stories about the stories are sometimes just as fascinating as the stories themselves. Uh, Ben's number three, the process of shooting the opening shot upside down and with close-up photography, making everything in the foreground and background in focus. Again, they think of the details. And it's only something you would know. If you did it, like I've never done that, I wouldn't know how to do that or how that would work. It's it's remarkable. Not being afraid to fail. It's really neat. Blake's number three. I'll now work off Jason here because he reminded me the making of the original trilogy might be the most documented making of film ever. Given this was the 70s, 80s, that's pretty incredible. And the fact they've been sitting on this stuff for over 40 years and it's just now being released. It just makes you wonder what else is out there, not only for Star Wars, but other things too. Hey, Lori's here. Hello, Lori. She's I'm about to teach online. I forgot to plug in my headset mic all the time. Hey, Lori. It's great to have you on the show. Welcome, welcome. So cool to see you. All right. I think that's everybody for three that's joining us live right now. Remember, not only can you see and experience the show live with me and our friends here on Facebook every Monday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time, but also you can catch the audio feed later on your podcast catcher, anywhere you listen to podcasts. And it will, the video is posted not only on our Coffee with Kenobi Facebook page, but on our YouTube channel, which you should subscribe to if you haven't already. And then on Instagram as well. So follow us there too. Lots, lots of places to enjoy Coffee with Kenobi. Let's go ahead and jump to number two. Number two, the trench run rationale. Several of you have mentioned this. The fact that we the trench run exists because they notice while on motorcycles that things look faster in trenches. I never... Never, never, never would have thought of that. It's brilliant. It's genius. And again, these are the things that blow my mind. They absolutely blow my mind because it's just not something that I think about. And, and again, so much of life is perspective and, and trying things and ex experimenting and trying to figure out what works, especially if you're a creative person. So this was just really illuminating to me. Number two for Mary. Rob McCoy's interviews and so many of his drawings displayed on the episode. I love that too. That would almost made my list, but a few things bumped, bumped it a little bit. But anything with Rob McCoy is delightful. And I'm, I know you feel the same way, Mary. I'm sure you all do. He's just gold. Number two for Minta. Filming the trench run. I knew for a while that it took quite a bit of work. But seeing the actual process was jaw dropping. Yes. Yeah. Very similar to my number two. It's just really neat. Jason's number two. 
all the teamwork and collaboration during crunch time. It's incredible how arduous making a movie can be. Yeah, it's, it's amazing they ever get made or so intimidating, but amazing. The ultimate collaborative process really. Ben's number two, the story of Phil and John. Make as many aliens as you can in six weeks, which led to the stop motion aliens for the board table. Their dynamic together was great. I love seeing how they're all still friends later in life. I love that too. I noticed that when I interviewed them, that just the way they kind of played off each other, I could tell there was a definitely a history there that went beyond just being collaborators. Blake's two. The fact we left off the last episode with them only having two shots done, I think, now seeing all the hard work and magic these guys somehow pulled off with really a small budget and short time and change everything with it always inspired me. It's yes, I'm I'm just a broken record, me without my thesaurus tonight. But yes, it was really wonderful. Uh, uh, Jason says Mary Rock McCoy's concept art is my honorable mention. I know I had a a calendar from a couple years ago that was just these it's like massive massive pictures of Ralph McCoy's art, and I tried to tear some of the pages off really cleanly and it and it ripped and I was like oh man. Because they're really nice. I wish we had more access to these amazing works. I mean, I feel like we'd buy them. I feel like we'd be so interested in them. All right. Let's go to number one. And I'm guessing it hasn't come up too much. Maybe all of us are going to have this for number one. Let's see. Whoops. That's not right. Number one. <laughs> number one for me is George's backstory. George Lucas's backstory is everything. I, I've, I've read Brian J. Jones's biography i've read chris taylor's how star wars conquered the universe i've read lots of things about george i'm sure you all have but it's just amazing what this man did who this man is and how he persevered his vision uh, all the doubts his calm the way that even when he was insanely stressed he, he the way he treated everyone else is just constantly amazing and inspiring to me i mean i love george lucas I, it's 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 a shame that in the in the late '90s and early 2000s that he kind of got a little bit of slack. Although I don't generally like to focus on that kind of stuff because I think it's silly. But I think people are realizing after time that he's a genius. He's he's just an, I mean I think people always knew that, but boy, even more than we realize. I mean, like an iconic genius, iconic. Mary's number one. George saying maybe there's a reason I'm here. Mm. After seeing the remnants of the car he was in after that massive accident, his bone chilling. If he had not survived yet, to wonder how long it would have been before we could see the discoveries he was involved in. I know. Exactly. And would we have all known each other? I, I don't think so. I, it seems hard to believe. But yes, it, absolutely. Uh, Jason also has George as his number one. George Lucas's determination and his desire to remain as artistically unfettered as possible. This documentary is giving me a whole new appreciation for him and the movies he created that we all love so much. Yes. Mainta is number one, never satisfied. To hear that George wasn't entirely happy with the final cut was shocking to me. But after explaining how he wanted to add those other effects made sense. He didn't have the technology back then after what he said that he wanted to make the next film better. It cemented it right there with all his other movies down the road. Yes. Here, here. I love that we all have George as number one. Uh, Blake says, same as last week, it's George. Watching this brings me back as a kid wanting to know everything I could about him personally and his creative process. He's literally the, only, the one human on this planet I wanted to hug more than ever, aside from Dan's there. <laughs> well, Blake, I'm saving a hug for you, buddy. Next time I go to Florida, for sure. Thank you. That's fun. Now, yeah, George is great. I'm very grateful that I only got to talk to him for like 20 seconds, but hey, I got to put my arm around him and say thank you. Mission accomplished, man. Mission accomplished. Ben's number one. George is one word to making movies persistence after watching his life story up to that point. I can see why he chose that word. It applies to so many things in life, too. He's a great teacher and truly a legend. Here, here, Ben. Here, here. So, this is fabulous. Thank you all so much. Next week, and I've been ma I actually mapped out through Thanksgiving what all these shows, next shows are going to be. Uh, next week is the third episode from Light and Magic. Just think about it. So, next week we'll have the third one, the week after the fourth. Then the week after that we'll have five and six together. And then we'll be talking to Andor for months, four months. So, but next week is the third episode of From Light and Magic. Just think about it. Speaking of Andor, speaking of Andor, did you hear it? Did you did you find out who I got to interview last week? Genevieve O'Reilly plays Mon Mothma, Kyle Soler, and Denise Go, who you will meet very soon in Andor. And then Diego Luna himself, Cassie and Andor. 
I got to talk with all of them, along with some of our peers in uh, the Star Wars fandom and media universe. So being able to talk with them was pretty electric. To hit, just sit in the studio as I'm talking to you now and looking back and seeing Diego Luna looking at me and talking to him. It was a wonderful thrill. A wonderful thrill. Ben says, can't wait for this next one. It is so good. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Mary says, and or with all caps. Oh, boy. I'm not going to say anything yet, but oh, boy. Lori says, it was great. Yeah, thank you, Lori. I'm, I was really glad to be a part of it. Really special. Uh, Blake says, Dan is literally a Jedi master at this point. Well, thank you, Blake. Your check is in the mail, buddy. Appreciate that so much. So that was Coffee with Kenobi this week. Really an amazing uh, episode I was glad to be a part of. Speaking of, if you are not a member of the CWK Alliance and you uh, are missing CWK Pour Over, we've got over 200 podcasts there. It's me, Tom Gross, and Corey Club. We review Star Wars things. We talk about the world of coffee with Kenobi in our lives. We talk about all kinds of pop culture. And last week, we talked about the first episode of She-Hulk. Now, it was great because one of us loved it, one of us really, really, really liked it, and one of us did not like it at all. I'm not going to tell you who was where, although I will say I love it. But other than that, um, if you want access to this, then you just become a member of the CWK Alliance. For as little as $5 a month, you get access to these podcasts. Uh, and if you're at the MVP level, you get access to the video as well. So if you're one, if you're curious about that, you want to support Coffee with Kenobi and me, go to coffeewithkenobi.com slash CWK Alliance. Not only do you get access to CWK Prover every week, but a possible video one and 10% of your monthly contributions go directly to the St. Jude Children's Hospital, which is so, so important to me. Now, let me rewind a little bit. You may remember uh, on September 17th, uh, I am going to be a part of Potathon and I will have Matt Martin as my guest. That is on September 17th, so a couple of Saturdays away. We're getting so close. It's going to be a really special event. I hope that you'll join me there. All right, let's go ahead and jump into Ask TNZ. All right, Ask TNZ. Uh, if you have any questions for me, uh, I will answer anything that I possibly can. Uh, Blake says, have you watched any of the making of Star Wars docuseries on Vice TV? I forgot his exact name, but it's maybe the guys of the toys who made us on Netflix. I believe it's on Hulu and has the first ever on camera interviews with George's ex-wife who edited the original trilogy. So it's on, uh, I think the FX channel. Is that right? I've, I've got them all recorded. I've seen the star Wars one and I love it. And I've got the rest of them recorded. I just haven't gotten a chance to look at them yet, but they're good icons are uncharted. I, I mean, I don't know this for sure. Well, I'm, I'm 99% sure that these are not Disney sanctioned or Lucasfilm sanctioned. So I've been not been giving them a lot of attention on the show, but I'm aware of them. There's some interesting stories there and some great footage. So yeah, it's, it's definitely compelling. It's absolutely compelling stuff. Uh, and Minta, I didn't get to post this up here. She says, this is Andor. Minta is very excited for Andor. Yes, 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 yes. I'm excited for Andor too. I'm definitely excited for Andor too. Well, if no one has any other questions for me, you know what? There is one thing I want to do. I've been I've been doing this on pour over. I've been we've been opening stuff, but I've got this figure of George Lucas as a stormtrooper. Uh, it's a black series. When I don't really get a lot of the black series stuff, it's a 50th anniversary of Lucasfilm. Um, I think I'm going to open it right now. I, you know, that's something. If you've been listening to pour over, you know that we talked a lot about collecting for like three weeks in a row. And I've just kind of had to change. I'm just like, you know what? I want to enjoy this stuff. I'm not going to open the stuff that I've already got sealed, but new stuff I'm going to open. So do you think I should open it? Uh, Lori says, did you watch the Andor long trailer in IMAX? So I wanted to watch Rogue One in IMAX, and I know Ross Holliban did, and it looked like he had an amazing time. Um, But I, the nearest IMAX for me is three hours away, so I didn't get to see the trailer. Lori, how was it? I'm sure it was terrific. Uh Ben says, I like Blake's question about a non-Star Wars content last week to keep our passion for Star Wars. We should have a top five on that. You know what? I like that too. And Blake, I'm glad that you posted that. It's important to have other interests besides Star Wars or not. Just don't focus on one thing. So yeah, that would be a fun one to talk about someday. 
Blake says, got the same figure, open it, and he's quite in insistent. So I think I will. Mary says, the final episode of the series was last week. Lots of the same stories as Light and Magic, but the big difference is lots of interviews with Marsha Lucas. Yes, yes. Jason wants me to open it up. Uh, Lori says it was great. All right, I'm opening up. I'm opening. Here we go. Oh, there's still a weird part of me. It's like, oh, what are you doing? But I don't want it in a box. I want to display George. And then when they have that option where, where Hasbro's going like to let us make figures of ourselves, let's post a picture. I'll just post a figure of me next to George Lucas. How about that? All right, this is hard to do with this camera, but we're going to make it happen. I'm not sure how this works as a podcast, but here we go. Okay, the back is off. There you go, George. You're free, buddy. You are free. So here we go. Take him out of the back. And there is a close-up of him out of the package. The likeness of the face is decent. Okay, let's get the helmet out. There is this. What I like about this is I can say, oh, look, I've got a Stormtrooper. So I, you know, the Stormtrooper helmet is about as iconic as it gets. So there's that. Let's get the blaster out first. Let's save the best for last, which is George himself. The sound of the package is probably very satisfying. Yeah, it's taped up pretty good. I'm not getting it out. There we go, George. George Lucas, ladies and gentlemen, as a stormtrooper. Boy, this is really cool. It's been so long since I've opened up a figure like this that I almost forgot what they felt like. Um, but the knees are not very bendy. Well, yeah, they are. I guess they are. Okay. Is bendy a word? Now it is. It's pretty articulated. There you go, George Lucas. Let's see how George Lucas looks with the Stormtrooper helmet. Uh, does it fit on him? Blake, does it fit on him? Uh, yeah, you gotta, it's like the real helmet. you got to turn it sideways to fit it on him. Actually, it doesn't really fit very well. Huh. Well, that's what we got. And then I, I'm going to keep him without the helmet on. Hopefully his head won't pop off. That would be tragic. Okay, there it goes. So there you go. I opened a Star Wars figure. There you go. He looks cool. He's going to have a place of honor in my studio. Yeah, there you go. All right, George Lucas. Thank you so much for joining us. How about it? Let me turn. I think this was too loud last week. I'm going to turn this down a little bit. There we go. Uh, Blake says, be funny if the figure came alive and asked about budgets and how many CWK live shots are done like it's Toy Story. Ooh, that would be cool. That would make for a good movie. Jason said, George refused to be put in a box, so don't leave this figure in one either. There you go. No, I will not. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate that. Ben says, put a sticky note over his head that just says, just think about it. Ooh, there you go. Mary wants me to set him free. I did. Well, thank you, everybody, for encouraging me. Action figure therapy at its finest. Thank you, Jeff McGee, for inspiring that saying. Well, thank you so much again, everybody. Please, please, if you are considering, if you are considering joining us, Next summer in early June on the Halcyon, please stay tuned to Coffee with Kenobi's Facebook page as I renounce the dates very, very soon about the Galactic Star Cruiser. I do know, I'm pretty sure, that when we get the dates, it's first come, first serve. So if you're thinking about it, jump on there and make your reservation for sure. Because I want to go on the Star Cruiser and go to Batu with all of you. Again, join me. Next week, join all of us next week as we look at the third episode of Light and Magic. Just think about it. Uh, Mary, have a great week. Mary, may the force be with you. And Blake says, hey, our community means the world to my fandom and you're all amazing people. CWK forever and love you, Dan, the CWK crew. Thank you, Blake, so much. Thanks all of you for joining us. Hey, again, next week, when you join us, bring a friend. Love to have more people in this conversation and this experience that is Coffee with Kenobi is amazing. Star Wars family. So on behalf of myself and the Stormtrooper Black Series figure George Lucas, have a great week everybody. This week I've got, speaking of Mouse Fan Travel, Becky Mankin is going to join me to talk all about that Kyber Crystal drink, that $5,000 drink. Becky's going to tell you the whole story, the whole experience. It's a story you're not going to want to miss. So be on the lookout for that on Thursday. 
Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Jason. Have a great one, everybody. Remember, this is a live podcast you are looking for. Thank you, everybody. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for.